Hello, it's 10 p.m. in Lagos, Nigeria and Lisbon, Portugal. It's midnight in Rome and Copenhagen. It's 10 p.m. here in Accra and this is News at 10 on TV3 and 3FM 92.7. You can also catch us live on your DSTV channel 279. Let's start with a major uh, summary of the major news highlights of the day. Hundreds of NDC faithfuls besieged the police headquarters demanding the release of the party's Deputy General Secretary, Kokua Nidoho. He was arrested after predicting a civilian coup d'etat to unseat President Kufuado in a comment on an Accra based radio station. The government has described the comments by the Deputy General Secretary uh, of the National Democratic Congress, Kokua Nidoho, as treasonable. According to a statement signed by the Information Minister, Mustafa Hamid, government finds it disturbing that the NDC has not condemned the comments. And speakers at a political neutrality forum in Accra have called for the dismissal of civil servants who leak information and cabinet memos to the public. They argue that those culpable should be prosecuted to serve as a deterrent to other employees. And the Bank of Ghana has introduced reforms for financial institutions in a bid to address corporate governance challenges that have bedeviled the sector in recent years. A new policy dubbed the Banking Business Cooperative Governance Directive 2018 seeks to define the roles of each member of a board, their tenure and age limit and board structure, among others. Those were our major news highlights. Remember, we're streaming live on Facebook and on 3news.com. You can also hear us on 3FM 92.7. Up next is a big one. Welcome back. Now, hundreds of NDC faithfuls have besieged the police headquarters demanding the release of the party's Deputy General Secretary, Kokoa Nidoho. He was arrested after predicting a civilian coup d'etat to unseat President Tikufuado in a comment on an Accra based radio station. Director General of CID DCOP, Mamiya Tiwa Adudankwa, told TV3 the police has begun its investigations. We want A blockage of the entrance of the police CID headquarters and part of Ring Road Central by supporters of the opposition National Democratic Congress. The chairman of the party, Kofi Potofi, deputy chairperson Betty Modi Drisu, former chief of staff Julius Debra, and other high ranking members, as well as the national chairman of the PNC, Bernard Mona, were granted access into the premises. The NDC faithfuls demanded the release of their Deputy General Secretary, Kokua Nidoho. Earlier, 
The Director General of the Police CID, DCOP Mamiya Tiwa Adudankwa, assured of full investigation. Based on the remarks that he made about history repeating itself, so we've just started the investigation and the outcome will let the public know. What we want to do is that the citizens of this country are protected and everybody is safe. So that is part of our work and that is exactly what we are doing. Yeah, the neighbor for Kwanya Edi Obia Ayache no no film. The procedures are there. Yeah, in changing no yeah, yeah, no shit. He said the yeah, Chi Obia Edi no film na asa ni Edi ono so be film. The party followers vowed to be there till the deputy general secretary was released. Right, so my colleague uh, Salam Amenya was at the police headquarters all day. Uh, he's joining me in the studio for a discussion. So Salam, tell me, uh, by the time you left, uh, what was the situation at the, at the CID headquarters? Well, um, you know, as the issue kept running, the numbers started increasing, the people started massing up, and I believe that the police felt that they could be overwhelmed by the numbers. So uh, we are told that the police were instructed to disperse the crowd. And that was where they started uh, firing rubber bullets as well as spraying hot water on the people. So there was some, some kind of pandemonium where people were struggling to run away. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we found a lot more people who were hit by the bullets. Some were hurt in their head to the extent that they were bleeding. But one unfortunate situation that we found was one guy who was telling us that he's actually not part of the supporters, but he went to uh, do a job at the CID headquarters for the director of uh, the police patrol team. He went to fix his multi TV dish for him, and uh, he was very disturbed that he's been injured because of that. One lady too was hit in the tie, and she she was almost collapsing, and she had to be rushed to the hospital. When we spoke to some of the executives of the party, they expressed worry because they, they told us that they had an arrangement with the police that they want to ensure that there isn't any kind of clashes between mm -hmm. the, their supporters and the police. So you, 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 your, your narrative suggests that the, the chaos actually came about because police started putting in place measures to disperse, to disperse the crowd the and crowd. it became violent. It became People violent. were hurt. Were we able to get any responses uh, from the police service on the method they adopted in, in, in dispersing well, this that, crowd? Well, that we, we did not get we because not. We, we didn't know who was actually leading the team as at that time to talk. It didn't look like there was a, a visible leader of a team, right? Because in such operations, uh, everyone is everywhere. But were you able to pick up information where Koko Anidoho was taking to? Because the information we gather is that he was not granted bail, and then he has been charged. His lawyer spoke to us to tell us that uh, some charges of treason have been preferred against him. Do we know where he yes, is? Yes, we, we, we don't know. Or we only know that he was whisked away. Uh, but uh, unconfirmed reports suggest that probably he's been sent to the BNI, uh, one of the BNI. Mm, he possibly yeah. might be spending the night the there in a, off, cool, yeah. in a cooler. Yeah. I like the way we say mm -hmm. it, a cooler, to cool off. Right, so this is still news at 10. Let's move on. Uh, still on this story, TV3 gathers that the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Koko Anidoho, has been whisked away to an unknown location. Meanwhile, the national organizer of the party, Kofi Adams, has condemned the use of rubber bullets while the police and dispersing the party supporters who gathered at the CID headquarters. But this is what the government wants. That is the reason for bringing a base, an American base into this country. So this is what they are setting out for. So Ghanaians must see what it is that we have as a government. When you are supposed to be protecting the people, because of the recolonization that you are embarking on, you are shooting at the good people of this country who sweat money that we have spent to buy these ammunitions for them. They are spending it on innocent Ghanaians who are just here to express their concerns about what is going on. And I think that His Excellency the President, if he is watching, if he is listening, as the commander-in-chief and the number one gentleman of this country should call his men to order. 
Right, let's do some discussions on this. Adam Bona is a security analyst. Uh, he's a CEO of uh, Security Warehouse. Uh, grateful for your time yeah. at such a short notice. There are a lot of discussion about uh, the action of the police service, uh, the comments uh, Kokoa Nidoho made. Uh, I mean, I would always like to just oppose that with previous comments that have been made before. Uh, Kenna Japon made uh, similar comments he was taking through the court system to, charged uh, with treason and all of that. Is this something that w the police service should uh, marshal all its energy to charge uh, treason? Well, I think, uh, for me, I think the courts are there for all of us, for possible lawbreakers. And so if the police uh, do their investigations and they come to the conclusion that, uh, you know, he needs to be charged and sent to court. He should have his day in court. That is what I think. But, uh, you know, back to that, I'll say the, I listened to the, what he said on that radio station. Uh, is it Happy FM? Happy FM. And I would think that state institutions like the NCA, like the Ministry of Communications, and all those people should have cracked the whip by now. That radio station should have been closed down. Really? Yes. Would that not be too far? That would be too far. And a little too harsh. No. Especially when the moderator was actually no. directing Kokua no. Nidoho to, to see, be circumspect with the actions he was making. Have you also realized that politicians and those who make reckless statements are very selective in stations they make those statements? When has your station been called into? you know, to answer some of this uh, unfortunate... Well, because you know, we do not allow such exactly. rhetoric on our platform. That is what I'm trying to say. It means that by our nature, depending on where you are going to, you are likely to be reckless. But if the station themselves realize that if you call Adam Bonner into your station, he's going to be making statements that would probably put the station into some bad light they would know what they, they probably they wouldn't, wouldn't call me into your station, let alone call me into a program. And if I'm coming here and I know that whatever I say, you could be in trouble, your station could be in trouble, I'll be measured. But you see, and just, that's what I'm saying, there are a number of stations in this country who you won't find politicians and those who make this, some of these So what you're suggesting is that the radio station should equally be facing yes. punitive no, measures in, as in, much as Kokwa is being in, dragged in, through the court exactly. system. Exactly. In any civilized state or country, this station would have been suspended. Are you aware that the license belongs to us, the people of Ghana, and not uh, the owners of the station? They, we've only rented it out to them. And so if you allow people to make such comments and statements on your station, then they can suspend and make invest and investigate you afterwards if they find that mm -hmm. probably uh, then, and so you can go back and then answer to... So basically you feel that the police action is in, is in order if they have no, evidence yeah. to back their charge and go to court and yeah. allow the man to defend himself also through the legal himself. system. Yes. But you feel that the media station uh, involved should also face some should punitive face, charges. Yes, some but punitive. let's look at the responses that usually uh, accompany these uh, actions. Uh, we've had political supporters or mass up at the police headquarters, apparently they're, they're going to lend their support to the man who is facing uh, these charges. I mean, uh, Dr. Opuni also went to court, a lot of supporters there. Should we be encouraging these kinds of camaraderie? I think we shouldn't. We shouldn't. Macron was arrested. Did you hear this type of brouhaha? It would have come on CNN, it would have come on President Zuma recently you know, is was arrested and is facing some form of investi you know, investigative, uh, going through some investigative process. We shouldn't encourage it. Just that I listened to your reporter who came, who sat here before yeah. me. He did mention someone had just gone in to do his daily job and get paid, and he received a rubber bullet. Why should it be? They were, I listened to the, the unfolding drama, people using the, the, the road in front of the police headquarters couldn't move. Those coming couldn't come in. Those going couldn't go because 
there was a blockage, mm. which the public order law doesn't allow us to do. So people were literally just You just breaking mentioned the, law. the rubber bullet thing, and I think uh, we should bring that to the fore. Uh, the, the police use rubber bullets and hot water cannons to disperse the agitated crowd. You think the rubber bullets thing was the best? I mean, uh, Oh, I mean, I think we've come a long way uh, from 1992 to use live bullets. No, they, they use live They was just, you know, meme you, that just finish you. Now we've come a long way, and so uh, if they are using rubber bullet, I wouldn't, I mean, I don't know, I haven't examined. Can the rubber the, bullet yes. kill? A rubber bullet can kill depending on where it hits you. Where will, it, on, yes. where, where will you if die? Go, I mean, if, right yeah. by your chest. Yes, side. You, you could die or depending on, you know, and so it could kill depending on how close and where you took the bullet. And so mine is that the rubber bullet is, is in order, but I don't know whether they shot them, I don't know how, whether, I mean, definitely they had to shoot them to disperse them. And so the rubber bullet, yes, it was in order. Uh, people shouldn't go there uh, because at the end of the day, I don't think he has been, he, I mean, the court has convicted him and he would have his day in court. If he's sent to court and the court finds him guilty, fine. If the court says, after, I mean, go through the process and they free him, he goes. But the, the around, I mean, I've heard people say Accra seems to be, and no, we are not in a state of anarchy. Yeah, there's no, it's just this isolated incident. And so I would say that no, uh, I'm told the, the, the demonstrators have left the place, the place is quiet. And so tomorrow I'm told there is uh, some, uh, you know, demonstration. I was with Kofi Adams on a program before coming here. And so they will urge them that people should not go off. You were, the, the operations commander for Greater Accra is Kwesi Fori, Commander Kwesi Fori. Yeah. He's in charge of the police operations in, in you know, Greater Accra. Accra. And Kwesi Fori is that daring. And so those who are listening to me, if you go off the route, I'm sure Kwesi Fori will whip you back into the lane. And mm -hmm. if you are not careful, some rubber bullets would catch you and you say they didn't. And so it's a peaceful, the law allows us to uh, be responsible during demonstrations. If you take the laws into your own hands, then they have the so right to... So you expect to tomorrow's uh, demonstration to be a bit uh, charged I, I as would a have, result of what happened I today. would have wished, if I was in charge... You would not effect the arrest uh, today? No. Even if, yes, I would probably... Either I don't effect the arrest, or if I did, I would have to ask the leaders of the impending demonstration to call it off till another day. Right. But at the end of the day, I think uh, the police administration is still has to be in charge, and they are in charge. Kwesi Fori, I believe, is going to do the right uh, thing. Do the right thing, right. and those who know Kwesi Fori will know that if you he will whip you, and he will read, he will be very quick to read that portion of the public order act to you and tell you that he needs to make sure you conform to what the lay down rules. Right, yeah. um, Ms. Adam Bona, we're grateful for your yeah. time. Thank you very much. Adam Bona is uh, CEO of the Security Warehouse, as a security analyst. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, private legal practitioner Martin Pebu has insisted the comments by the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC does not constitute treason. He maintained it would take a lot more to carry out the act, adding it's only a reckless statement. He spoke earlier on News 360. Koko Anidoho's statement and what the Constitution describes as treason. Does the statement amount to treason? Not at all, not at all, not at this stage. You see, his statement by itself doesn't constitute much. It would need more, a lot more than that. Even I say a lot more than that is an understatement, okay? So for a person to have said that there would be a civil war, no, that's not it. At best, that's a reckless statement, and I'm sure all the necessary uh, institutions and parties have come out to condemn it, okay? So until we find evidence that there are preparations towards uh, such war, you would not be able to say that the comment by itself is treasonous, no. No, it's not treasonable. Because uh, what we do know is that the police has been to the residence of Koko and Yido. We do not know exactly what uh, they found there uh, after the search of, of his house. But, but then um, you and I are not clothed with the, the powers to yeah. determine whether or not he's able to carry out these threats or yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. Um, the, the security agencies are able to do that. And by this, I'm not saying that he can do it. Mm -hmm. But then the security agencies are clothed with that 
responsibility yes. and the powers to establish whether or not he's able to carry this out, right? That's correct. That's correct. But uh, considering that the last time round there was a similar incident, incident and it didn't go well, mm -hmm. would have expected that there should have been a lot more of tact, okay? The police mm -hmm. should have been more tactful. I would have preferred that they would have left this matter to the national security and the BNI. They do a lot of covert operations then they would have monitored him. Because you mm. see, the last time we had a Kennedy Japan matter, you mm. see that there was a lot of public anxiety, a lot of tension, and it didn't come to much. So this time round, we would have thought that we should have learned from our experience. So that upon that comment, the BNI would then have been deployed, the national security deployed to monitor. You think that the police, how they went about it, going to arrest him at the press oh, conference? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, lacked tact. And it now there's a lot of... NDC supporters at yes, the headquarters. Yes, yes, yes. We've only ended up creating heroes out of this situation. Yeah, that's created not heroes best. out of yes, this situation. Yes, yes, yes. You've made that you know who a big hero. Yes, because now to be that we are deploying the coercive powers of the state against a, a, this, uh, a harmless citizen, so to speak. You say it. Who, who tells you if somebody is about to carry out a war or, or a coup d'etat, I think he's going to come out in public and say so. No, we should have learned from the Kennedy Japan incident. That's such a matter. Of course, as soon as the public came out, government and all the institutions came out and condemned it, the next thing would have been for the BNI and national security to do their covert operations, monitoring him up and down, okay? Because, of course, these right. things, uh, they, 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 they are worth monitoring quietly. But to have deployed the full force of the right. state in this manner, we've ended up making him a hero. Well, yeah. thank you for well. your... Indeed, uh, we possibly ended up making Koko Anido a big hero. This is News at 10. We're live from the News Hub at Adisawi Kanda. And if you're listening to us on radio, this is 3FM 92.7. We'll be right back. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, three teacher unions have asked the National Teaching Council to immediately halt any decision to issue licenses to teachers nationwide. They've explained that such moves will have dire consequences on their job security and could trigger industrial disharmony. National President of the National Association of Graduate Teachers, Nagrat Injo Kabonu, spoke with our reporter, Daniel Opoku. The National Teaching Council has decided to implement its 2010 decision to issue licenses to teachers before the end of this year. However, the three teacher unions, Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT, and the Coalition of Concerned Teachers, CCT Ghana, have kicked against its implementation. They have again called for broader consultations to reduce the growing tension among its members nationwide. What do you want? No, we want a regime of discussion and negotiation that will not place the withdrawal or otherwise of a license at the whims and caprices of any manager or director. We want a situation where when a license is going to be suspended, when a license is going to be revoked, when a license is going to be withdrawn, it would have gone through procedure understood by all the parties so that human desire do not determine the acquisition, possession, or otherwise of a license. Although the teacher unions say they do not oppose the issuance of the license, but they fear its implementation could have dark consequences on their job security. Certain lawyer called something Susu. Now, as we speak, lawyer Susu cannot work as a lawyer. I do not know rules and regulations, the modalities, but lawyer Susu is not working. Lawyer Susu is not earning income just because somebody has just withdrawn his license. I do not want this calamity to befall my members. They have called on the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service to step in. The National Teaching Council is here to respond to the issue. And that's how we wrap up with news at 10. Thank you extremely for making time. On behalf of the crew, good night. There is more news at 3news.com.